Hi there, it's Dr. Rob here, the head of the Electronics and Robotics Group in the Engineering Department at La Trobe University. Today, I'll be uh, reviewing the Mark Rober course from monthly.com on creative engineering. Now, before I start, I should say that I don't have any connection to monthly.com uh, or to Mark Rober personally or professionally. Although Mark, if you'd like to get in touch, I'm sure there's lots of cool things that we could do together. And for one thing, my kids would love it. They're probably your biggest fans. Well, let's get started. What is the course? Well, in 30 days, you basically fly through a whole section on mechanical engineering, a whole section on electronic engineering, um, using Arduinos and sensors and uh, actuators, and then a whole section on kind of joining it all together and creative storytelling to be able to tell the story as Mark Rober does, if you've seen his videos. Well, will it make you the, the, the top engineering the world? Well, no, it won't. Um, it won't take you from zero to hero, but it will take you from zero to actually starting to tinker and to, to prototype and to actually apply some hands-on skills. Mark constantly talks about leveling up in his course of um, pushing yourself to, to learn something and get to the next level from where you currently are. And I, I feel the course actually does that quite well. Uh, it does that by, well, you watch a series of videos, you know, you've got a peer group that you interact with, but the main part, the main way it does it is you're actually building things. Um, as part of the course, you're meant to build three prototypes, a mechanical prototype, an electronic prototype, and something that kind of combines them all together into a big final build. Um, so, um, very, very hands-on and very prototype orientated. So it won't take you from, it, it won't replace uh, a four-year engineering degree and a decade worth of experience, but it will give you a whole lot of tips and hints and also lay the foundations for experimentation and learning and, and prototyping. Um, I learned things from a technical side of things, um, from using denatured alcohol or methylated spirits, as we call it in Australia, to remove hot glue, um, on some of the ways that he's prototyping using um, and evaluating his prototypes on the mechanical side, using high-speed vision and things like that. Um, but I also learned things on the, the storytelling side and the brainstorming side that Mark uses to actually come up with his ideas and come up with ideas that will appeal to a wide range of people. Um, some people will create videos that will only appeal to uber nerds, people with a, almost a PhD in engineering or something like that, um, and their fan base will be about this big. Um, but Mark has this wide appeal, and his videos have this wide appeal, that they appeal from my, my three-year-old daughter who loves his um, Squirrel Ninja Obstacle Course video right up to, well, pretty well anyone I show them to. Um, and that's because he deliberately looks at different ways to appeal to different people and actually gets input from different people into that. So there's some really useful tips and hints there for the design process and trying to work out ways that will interact with different people within your audience and ap appeal to them. Uh, the course is very hands-on, so you, you're actually building things, has heaps of practical examples in it, and Mark's got a lot of projects that he draws those practical examples from, both um, in his former life at NASA and Apple, but also in all the projects that you've seen uh, on YouTube, everything from the world's largest Nerf guns, the world's largest super soaker, to lots and lots of things. Um, they're also really engaging. They use Mark's characteristic engaging style. He's very easy to listen to, nice to listen to, um, and they're, they're great videos, um, high quality filming um, and um, finish on them as well. Uh, his pace is pretty good and probably suits most high schoolers okay. Um, my oldest kids, um, they did about half the course with me. They're ages five and seven at the moment. They're probably a bit young. And one of the nice things about it is when you pay for it, you get lifetime access to it. So we'll probably do it again as a summer subject in you know, two or three years time when they've just progressed a bit further down and we'll have some fun builds and some fun things that we can design together. One regret that I had was that this course wasn't around 20 years ago when I was in high school myself and taught myself pick assembly and things like that. This would have been a great course to have then. Um, if some of those other things like Arduinos were around then as well. Um, I think there's a few things that probably could have been done a little bit better or a, a little bit more material on them. Um, on the mechanical engineering side of things, there probably could have been a bit more on the simple machines, um, things like screws and inclined planes and, and all of those fundamental um, mechanical uh, machines. Having something in there like TRIZ, the theory of inventive problem solving, probably could have bolstered the brainstorming side of things a bit, just to really 
uh, give people a whole lot of different options and different ways for solving problems and different ideas behind solving those problems. I think some of those things could have been helpful. On the debugging side of things, I think the, the mechanical side was pr probably fine for most people, but the electronic side, particularly when you're dealing with Arduinos and things like that, um, it probably would have been a bit help, more helpful to have uh, a bit more support in the forums and things with that. It wasn't much of a problem with me. I've been teaching that for uh, over a decade. But from my experience in teaching it, well, sometimes there's things that aren't quite perfectly intuitive and a little problem can be solved really easily uh, without someone banging their head against the wall for 10 hours if someone's there that knows what they're doing and, and can give a bit more help on that. Um, having said that, there's lots of Arduino forums and things, and there's probably other ways that people can get help as well. Finally, 30 days is not a long time, <laughs> particularly when you've got three things that you're trying to build and four kids that are running around the house as well having it stretched out a bit further, that might be a, a handy way to do it. But um, it is pretty tightly compressed, but it'll actually get you building, and that's, that's the main thing behind it. On my own side, it's really grown my motivation to actually show off some of the builds, and so over the next few months, I'm hoping to release uh, a series of videos on things that uh, I've actually built, some of the, the robots were built going in all sorts of weird and wonderful places, like sewers and um, down wombat burrows and things like that. Um, even one of the ones that I built on um, part of this course, the creative engineering one, which was a, a little lolly dispenser that actually uses a, a heart rate sensor, so it won't give you lollies until you've actually done some exercise and, and earned, an, uh, earned a lolly, for that matter. To a whole lot of other builds that we use within the classroom of teaching engineering. So do I recommend the course? Well, if you're looking to get some motivation and skills and things like that to kind of level up in actually creating some prototypes and, and doing engineering in, in a very practical level. Absolutely, there's a lot to be learned. Um, and even for people that have a, a fairly high level of engineering skills uh, in one area, yeah, there, there's certainly things that you can learn there. Uh, if you've got a PhD in mechatronics or robotics or something like that, you probably won't learn as much, particularly on the technical side of things, but on the presentation side of things, Mark certainly has a lot to offer there in the storytelling, getting people to interact with the various stories he's offering. So there's always something to learn and something really useful there. I'm hoping that these sort of courses will inspire the next generation of engineers, and hopefully some of those engineers will even study with us at La Trobe. So if you like the video, please consider subscribing, particularly if you want to see some more neat videos that I try and do in a Mark Robus sort of style, my own take on it at least. Thanks again, and hopefully that was helpful.